Imagine walking through a forest and you'll notice that nobody maintains it, nobody tills it, nobody adds fertilizer, nobody adds pesticides or herbicides or fungicides or anything like that. Nobody even goes and waters the forest, yet it's there and it's thriving to the point where it produces an abundance. It harvests its own water, it produces medicine, it produces food, it produces a whole ecosystem and timber on top of it without any human interaction. That is what permaculture studies and tries to replicate and install into human systems, right? Permaculture is a design system that studies nature, sees how these relationships go about, how they work together, and tries to replicate it on farms, gardens, communities, full-blown cities, small towns, east-facing balconies, all types of aspects, all types of applications. That is what permaculture does. Permaculture, let's go ahead and write it down, is the combination of permanent and agriculture. Right? But as time has gone by, as we've developed within permaculture, it's removed the agriculture part and has expanded it into a larger encompassing culture. So it's permanent culture. That is what permaculture is. That is the end goal of permaculture. In fact, in the designer's manual, you'll notice the last chapter of the, the permaculture design manual is focusing on how to build a permaculture resilient, not just sustainable, but a regenerative society in where we produce abundance in everything we do. Instead of fighting against nature, which keep in mind, nature will always win because it's working outside of human lifetimes. Instead of fighting against nature, we're working with nature creating regenerative systems. We can leave this place in a better position in which we found it. The current state of the world is uh, constantly losing soil. We lose tons and tons of soil down the Mississippi in the United States. We lose tons and tons of soil down the Mississippi every single year. Soil is our most valuable resource. Everything that we base everything off of has to do with soil. And you might be thinking, well, what about technology? Technology doesn't exist if the humans aren't there to maintain it. If there's no humans, then technology is pointless. Also, the deforestation of the Earth's lungs. By removing the force of the world, we are removing our oxygen supply. And without oxygen, as we'll get into later chapters and stuff like that, without oxygen, everything hits an anaerobic state, and again, we start dying. And then the third thing is like dealing with the pollution that we've already spilled all over this Earth. Fukushima, to this day, most of you guys have forgotten about Fukushima. Fukushima, to this day, is dumping radiation into the Pacific Ocean. Chernobyl, everybody's aware of Chernobyl. A recent event, the Hurricane Helene, oh, what about the train derailment in Ohio, where we had vinyl chloride all in the river, and then we lit it on fire, making it atmospheric and spreading all over, not just the United States, but the world. Or Hurricane Helene, there were a bunch of... PVC manufacturing plants as well as nuclear fuels facilities along the French Broad River that all dumped into the river after that event. We have more than enough pollution to deal with. But before we get into those topics, just remember, permaculture stands for permanent culture. How do we develop permanent regenerative systems for the culture that we need to provide or produce? Don't be thinking that you have to go out there and just immediately conquer the world. The prime directive of permaculture is to reject authority and take complete ownership of yourself and your children. That is a prime directive. Worry about your needs and your children's needs first and then we'll build out from there because you can't operate in a beneficial state until you hit a point of abundance. And until you hit a point of abundance, you go, can't go and help anybody else because now there's just two people in need instead of just the one that you can go help if you are operating from a point of abundance. So there's three ethics to permaculture. There's earth care. People care. and return 
surplus to the first two ethics. Those are the three ethics of permaculture. So if you can get down with the philosophy, if you can agree with the ethics, then permaculture probably is for you. And guess what? It's the only option we really have to fix this uh, burning trash pile that we're currently on. It's the only option that we have. It is the most effective way to deal with the situation that we are living in now. We no longer need to take um, statistics or evidence or gather evidence of anything concerning like the world breaking down. We already know that. We need solutions now. We need fast acting solutions. And believe it or not, the only resource we need are humans that are on board with permaculture, that agree with the prime directive, that agree with the philosophy of permaculture, that agree with the ethics of permaculture. Now, keep in mind, permaculture is not a religion by any means. By philosophy, I mean, like, do you agree with the tenets of permaculture? Like what I just stated, do you believe we need to take care of the earth? Do you, re do you believe we need to take care of people? Do you believe that we should return the surplus to the first two ethics? Return the surplus to the people and to the earth. If you can get down with all that, then permaculture is for you. In modern society, we focus so much on niching down and specializing into just one science or category or just, just one thing. And we forget about what nature does, and that's the interconnectedness of everything. So, for example, we have the sun, which is the basis of basically every natural system on earth, is the sun, that's the beginning point, right? And then the energy comes down and it interacts and connects all of these different aspects. So we might have the sun coming down and hitting the trees and the grasslands. Now, this cow over here interacts with the grasslands and occasionally interacts with the trees. And then this cow poops on the ground, which then interacts with the worms. And the worms, producing vermicompost, goes back into interacting with the soil, which the grasslands and the trees both in, like, r derive a lot of their nutrition from. Now, if, the more you create these interconnected webs, the more resilient the system is going to be. So if I just had, again, the sun, and it came down and just interacted with one or a couple of systems like that and then this system might interact with this system and then it goes into the sink the energy sink called soil well that's a very wasteful and that's a very inefficient system right there instead use the energy as many times as possible going into these systems before it hits the sink called our soil there we go this is a permaculture relationship. This is a modern CAFO operation slash uh, large scale agriculture, even suburban or city site right here. This is inefficient. This is very efficient. This is what we need to be aiming for. We need to be avoiding this as much as possible. Now, I have been a permaculture consultant for quite some time. I've gone to people's properties. I've given them an order of operations, what to do and what order, where to do it and when to do it, things like that. I've done that for quite a while. And I just recently got into soil biology testing. So looking at soil underneath the microscope and determining what organisms are there, what needs to be there, what needs to be eradicated and the steps we need to take in order to perfect our soil. I've been doing that for quite a while now. Now it's time to build and create more consultants or just more informed people instead of me, because I can only go to so many properties in my lifetime, right? But I can teach more people to go to more properties and consult, right? So I can also inform the growers, the farmers, the whatever it may be, the orchardists, the, I mean, even in society aspects, like this design system applies to your business as well. The more people I, I can educate, the more people they can educate, and then it's a compounding effect as opposed to just me trying to do everything. Not saying I'm Superman, because I'm definitely not, but instead of me trying to do everything, I've now taken the route to start teaching people. Now that I've gotten the experience, I've seen a bunch of different landscapes and a bunch of different ecosystems and a bunch of different climates. Now that I've acquired this experience and this education, it's time for me to start teaching other people. 
If you would like to join, hit the uh, Patreon account down below. I'll be teaching a permaculture design course. There's going to be a couple options there, so no matter what your budget is, you should be able to get this education. Now, unlike some other permaculture design courses that you find you know, at universities and stuff like that, um, I will only be keeping in the permaculture. This is a practical, applicable permaculture design course. Not something where we're going to be talking or wasting a bunch of time on things that, you know, don't really apply to 99% of people. We'll get to that in the future, but that's not going to be the main focus at first. And there's going to be a couple of different options on the Patreon account, and I'll be uploading as we go. If you would like this permaculture education, or if you would even like to become a consultant in the future, if you want to have your design certificate, Join me on Patreon, I'd love to teach you and start a conversation and begin the interaction for teaching permaculture. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section. I'll do my best to get to them or even address them in future videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want a consultation, because I don't have any other consultants just yet, then shoot me an email, link down below. And if you would like a soil biology test, it's linked down below as well. Also. Midwest Preparedness Conference, that's going to be September 23rd through the 28th. I'll be teaching how to raise your animals for free at Midwest Preparedness Conference. Can't wait to see you guys there. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.